Yo, what's going on, Fragrance family? It's your man Gator, better known as the Novice Nose out here in these fragrance streets. And today I'm coming to you guys with a review of a fragrance that kind of flew under the radar for the last, I would say, maybe six to eight months since its release. Um, it's one of those fragrances that got a little bit of hype, actually. The line that it came from got a little bit of hype when it was first introduced. And then it just completely dropped off of everybody's radar. Uh, the fragrance that I'm talking about right now is this one. So this is a fragrance from Fragrance World, of course. So Fragrance World um, had a Just line. So as you can see from the bottle, Just is in J-U-S-T, right? Their Just line um, was kind of led by uh, the Latafa Assad clone. Yeah, that's right. So what they did was they actually cloned a clone they were the dude that was playing the dude disguised as another dude basically <laughs> so what they did was they went after the Assad DNA which was a clone of the um, Dior Sauvage Elixir DNA and what they did was they marketed it as being a stronger version of Assad a smoother better performing version well, they had a few different fragrances in that Just line. They had one that I believe was a um, a Tom Ford uh, electric cherry, a lost cherry clone. Um, they had one that was a, uh, not a Yara, it was one of the other feminine scents. Uh, and then they had this one. So if you go to a lot, if you went to a lot of the sites at the time when the, when the Just line first dropped, um, they, they marketed it as being better versions of these particular products. They went after Latafa Assad wholeheartedly with that Aswad. They literally said on most websites, Oob Store, and even I think on the Fragrance World site, that it was a stronger version of Latafa Assad. Well, this particular fragrance, if you look at it, you can see the comparison to another fragrance that dropped almost at the same time that this one did, um, Latafa Zanzibar. So the color's a little darker, it's a little darker blue, a little deeper blue, uh, but people instantly looked at this and said, oh, they're going after Latafa Zanzibar, and it was just coming out, so it's like, how did they do that so fast? As a matter of fact, if you looked at some of those websites, they literally had <laughs> on there, and I don't know if it was a marketing error or what, it just said stronger version when they had this one up, just as rock is the name of this one, by the way. Um, they would put up, you know, stronger version of Latafa Zanzibar. So people were like, oh my gosh, they just dropped Zanzibar and there's already a better version? Um, so people were kind of itching to go after it and get it. But when it first dropped, there wasn't very much stock of it. I mean, the Just Line, um, I think, maybe sold out, like, almost instantly. Um, they got stock back in probably a couple of weeks after. But here's the thing. Zanzibar was very hot for those few weeks. But in the meantime, Jen Sense dropped a video where he actually explained what this particular fragrance was actually cloning. This fragrance is not a inspired by or clone of Latafa Zanzibar at all. This fragrance, just as rock, is actually an inspired by of Paco Rabanne's Victory Elixir. So when I heard that, like I wasn't that interested in just jumping all over it when I heard that it was a Zanzibar clone. But when I heard that it was a clone of uh, Victory Elixir, I had to jump on it. So I went and made sure that I got my hands on it. And it has been kind of like a, a, a big gate kept <laughs> part of my collection now for a while. So let me start with this. Um, I'm going to start with the notes in here. And well, before I even start with the notes, 
This is not a one-to-one -one of Victory Elixir. <laughs> it is definitely not that. Uh, it gets in the wheelhouse though, and it actually does some things a little bit different that I love about it. So let me go over the notes on this one. So the notes on Just As Rock, um, and this is uh, courtesy of Frank Rantica here. Um, the top notes are pineapple and cardamom. Uh, the middle notes are vanilla bean, incense, and sage. And then the, um, the base notes are sandalwood, tonka bean, and patchouli. That sandalwood is really important uh, as it goes forward here. Now, let me read you some of the uh, notes or the notes uh, from the Victory Elixir. Uh, and I'm going to use that as a reference point because you'll see where this thing differs and why I'm such a fan of how it does differ. So, the top notes in Victory Elixir are lavender, cardamom, and black pepper. Uh, the middle notes are incense and patchouli. Uh, and then the base notes of vanilla pod and tonka bean. So you see they have basically um, the same um, notes with a few, you know, slight uh, variations here. And they just kind of jumbled them up a little bit. That's important though because off the rip, off the top, when you first spray this on, and I'm gonna do a little spray to it. When you first spray this on, it is not Victory Elixir. <laughs> it is definitely not. They talk about the pineapple in the top notes on this particular fragrance, right? In the uh, Just As Rock, which the Victory Elixir doesn't have in its top notes. And you can definitely tell. There is like a subtle, almost, fruity sweetness going on in the background of it and that's from that pineapple it's not like a distinct like oh it's fruit but there is like a distinct kind of sweetness that's in there that's not in the top of the uh victory elixir um as a matter of fact the victory elixir has more of a freshness to it um a lot of times when you deal with clone fragrances you find that clone fragrances tend to be a little bit fresher off the top this one's kind of the opposite this one gives a little bit more of a a a sweet depth to it as you know as in a opposition to the uh og which has a little bit of a fresher opening and i think that fresher opening comes from the lavender in the top um but they both have that cardamom so you, you get a little bit of that spice when you first spray it on i give it about maybe 10 to 15 minutes where you do pick up that that subtle sweetness in the background they're similar don't get me wrong victory elixir just as rock they're similar off that first spray but they're not the same they're like i said the just as rock seems like it has like a little bit of a subtle sweetness in the background of it uh but that that lasts about 15 minutes once you get into that 15 to 20 minute range it loses that and it gets a little bit more towards the uh, the victory elixir so it's almost like they start out a little bit separate and then they start to kind of come together when you start getting into the mid and I think a little bit of that is from the incense and the patchouli that they they both have in them they tend to kind of you know match energy right there um they both have a little bit of that powderiness going on uh from the tonka um the vanilla starts to really amp up on both of these around the same time around that 30 minute mark so you start getting almost like a a a a smooth sweetness that kind of comes into the mid a little bit now here's the thing though that starts to really get different with the Just As Rock as opposed to the Victory Elixir. While the Victory Elixir kinds of keeps a, a smoothness, even though it's got that Tonka in there, um, it's a little bit of a powderiness, but it's still a smoother scent um, coming from it here. And it could just be better you know, materials um, used in Victory Elixir. But I doubt it. In this one, once it gets into that, that mid-range, there's almost like a slight cakey-ness to it. And I would say maybe, and I said 30 minutes in, I start noticing it, you can almost start noticing it now, off the skin. It gets almost like a cakiness. And I think that's from the sandalwood that actually is kind of boiling up from the base notes on this. It becomes present in it and it almost gives like a powdery, I, I when I first, 
smelled it and and left it on for a little while i kind of described it almost as like a a a chocolate coffee cake um but i did see someone describe it perfectly it's almost like somebody took some some nesquik now if you're familiar with nesquik it's like a um a chocolate mix right a powdered chocolate mix it's like somebody took some nesquik and kind of sprinkled it over the victory elixir so that you got a little bit more powderiness and a little bit more cakiness to it. And I think that cakiness, or what I'm calling cakiness, and I think I called it in the Spectre Wraith video, haziness. A little bit of that haziness is coming from the sandalwood. And as it dries down more, you get a little bit more of the woodiness from the sandalwood in this particular fragrance than you do in the elixir. So it basically travels like this. The, 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 uh, they're both pretty much separate um, as far as the opening goes. Into about 20 to 30 minutes, they kind of get to be a little bit more similar. As you get into that hour or so mark, they get a little bit, at least in the air, a little bit indistinct. Although if you smell them back to back, which I, I, I forget to tell you guys, I have Victory Elixir on this hand. If you smell them back to back on your skin directly, you can pick up the difference. You could actually pick up a little bit more of that, that powderiness and that sound of wood here. But in the air, you, you, you don't pick it up. Like from here, you're not picking that up. But if you smell it directly on skin, you will pick it up. So that, that happens for the first like hours, you know, a couple of hours or so. But then this goes with a, a, a major divergence into more of a sandalwoody um and like a powdery chocolate sandalwood type of um and it, it gets real cakey at that part uh at that point and i will say that while it is not the og while it is not a one-to-one -one of victory elixir it definitely gets you in the same wheelhouse um at least in the mid and in the middle of your dry down but more importantly, I think it offers something a little bit different. I think this one is a little bit more gourmand side. Now, I'm not saying it's a true gourmand, but what I'm saying is it does project itself in a more gourmand way than actual Victory Elixir does. And I will say that when I wear the two, I've worn both of them like, you know, back to back days before. I get a lot more compliments on this than I do on Victory Elixir. This one has this, it's, it's got a personality to it that's kind of like, like I said, it, it's like a, it wants to be a gourmand. It really does. And it's not quite there, but it's it, it wants to be a gourmand and it presents itself almost like a gourmand off of skin. That's what makes this, in my opinion, a hidden gem because people do shout you know throw compliments at this thing and for it to be a fragrance that got so much hype and then zero hype people i think when they found out that it was not a zanzibar clone people kind of steered away from it because zanzibar was the hot thing right and it looks like zanzibar so therefore it's not zanzibar oh it's a bad clone it's not a bad clone it's actually a pretty good decent inspired by fragrance and i like i said think that this is actually a hidden gym it's, it's got great longevity i mean that's it sits on my skin probably for about a good seven to eight hours um it projects man all throughout the day uh, when i wear it normally if i pass by people six seven hours in people can still pick it up that siage is still pumping projection wise you have to be careful with it because it is a lot stronger than it presents one of the things that that pineapple does at the top is that it keeps you from getting hit with the blast of of the spice right it mellows that spice out a little bit but trust me it does actually project pretty well um so be careful with the sprays on this one um all in all man i think this was one of my better pickups this year um uh, this is actually uh i think you can find it on fragrance by ca uh for a pretty good price now around 30 30 ish or so um this is something that not everybody's going to be smelling like not everybody's smelling like victory elixir either um so you already got that feather in the cap but to go with this and have that slightly gourmandish smell to it i think it's perfect this is a perfect fall scent 
Um, and I think I told you guys, I'm kind of going into my fall sense right now. This is one that I've been sitting, had sitting for a while. But like I said, I was gatekeeping. Uh, <laughs> but this is something I think that would be a great pickup for fall. In any event, that's all I got on this particular fragrance, guys. If you've got your nose on it before, let me know what you think about it, how it presents for you, and how it works for you. Uh, until next time, guys, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with somebody that you know that loves fragrance. Leave comments. You know I love to interact with you guys. Until I see you next time, peace out.